So this patient came in with a left MCA syndrome, a right hemiparesis, uh, and aphasia, and a left gaze deviation. So knowing this information, obviously our focus is on the left MCA territory, but we're going to have to remember to cover all of the vessels of the circular willis, all the large artery uh, potential occlusions, as there may be more than what uh, we're, we're expecting. So first of all, we have our source images here. We have our uh, reconstructed thick MIP axial image and our reconstructed thick MIP coronal image. So going over, starting with the source images, it's going to be slower to scroll up uh, as these are thin cuts. And first off, we need to window this. So we want to get this in a nice configuration so we can very clearly see the contrast in the arteries uh, silhouetted nicely against the background uh, of the brain in the subarachnoid space. And that's a reasonable uh, window for our purposes. So starting at the base of the skull, start looking at both verts coming up intracranially, forming the basilar, forming the top of the basilar, obviously not our main area of interest, but just to be methodical about it. Both PCAs coming off, so we see intact, normal anatomy without any large artery occlusions. Uh, now, just for the sake of completeness, again, let's start with uh, the opposite side from where we think the occlusion is probably going to be. So let's look at the right uh, internal carotid petrous portion coming up into the siphon. And then the top of the carotid, the carotid terminus here. The ACA coming across and the MCA here. And so we see no evidence of a large artery occlusion on the right side. Now, let's do the same thing on the left. Again, starting the base of the skull, petrous portion, and left internal carotid coming up. Siphon, work our way up to the carotid terminus. We see a T here. We see the ACA coming off. And we see the MCA. And then this is where, as we expect from the clinical syndrome, we see our cutoff. So zooming in. Again, we can window this to really put this into relief. And we see some areas of contrast, probably in veins surrounding this area, but there is a hard cutoff right here. Then we see some reconstitution of the MCA territory uh, distally by collateralization. We see the same thing here from the thick MIPS. It becomes much more obvious. See that hard stop to the left M1 segment, proximal MCA stem, and then reconstitution of the distal branches, the clot occupying this uh, space not filled with contrast. Same thing on the coronals, and try to get the window just right for each image. Here is the internal carotid. Zooming in a little bit, there's the ACA, MCA, and a hard stop compared to the opposite side. For reference, carotid terminus, ACA, MCA, see the lenticular striates coming off the M1 segment on this side. See distal MCA, no occlusion. And you see that by contrast here, the hard occlusion in the proximal M1 segment. OK, we've determined that there is a large artery occlusion in the left MCA. Now we need to look down in the neck and get a sense of the anatomy there uh, to determine our flight path up to the large artery occlusion intracranially. So here we have our uh, source images on the left and we have our reconstruction of the carotid on the right. So looking at the thick MIP reconstruction, get a good sense of the overall landscape, the common carotid, the carotid bifurcation in the neck. There's a very small uh, area of narrowing there, but nothing too bad. A little bit of narrowing here, but again, there's no uh, significant stenosis. Uh, and no occlusion of the internal carotid in the neck all the way up to the skull base. And if we want to look on our source images uh, to identify our vessels, first find a section down here in the low neck, high chest region. The, the top part of the chest, low uh, part of the neck, uh, that corresponds to the common carotid on each side and the vert on each side. So we see our vessels as we come up. We see our carotid bifurcation here on the right. We see our carotid bifurcation here on the left. As we come up, immediately we can see that this vessel is branching, so that must be our external as the internal 
carotid doesn't have any branches between the carotid bifurcation in the neck at its origin uh, and the skull base. Uh, so we follow our internal up here again, looking at the same thing we looked at on the reconstructions all the way up to the skull base. And then we can window it so we can better silhouette against bone and we can see it we're all the way up to that uh, features portion and we've already tracked it up from there. So going back down, just make sure that we have that connection all the way through. Back down, bifurcation, common, tracing the common back to its origin here all the way down, a little bit of artifact there, but still no evidence of any stenoses, and then the origin uh, at the arch. So there we have a clear flight path up from uh, the aortic arch all the way up to uh, the large artery occlusion in the left M1.